Banners, uh, Database Manager for Drexel University, and I'm excited to be your host panelist uh, for today's FileMakers, uh, sorry, excuse me, FileMaker uh, <coughs> Inside Higher Education Web Seminar, where we will explore real-world uses for the FileMaker platform in higher education, as well as share some best practices. We're also joined today by Rosemary Tiji, a consulting engineer at FileMaker, who will be doing today's live demonstration. Before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contra contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. That number again, just in case, is 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to type in some questions. Let's talk briefly about how to enter a question. Go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and send. We're going to cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. And with that, I will hand the presentation over to Rosemary. Rosemary, can you please unmute your microphone? Ah, sorry about that, everyone. Thanks, Kevin, for that uh, introduction and for inviting me to um, present at the kickoff seminar for the FM head group. Um, previous to my journey FileMaker, I was an IT manager and database manager at the Harvard University Press. Um, so throughout my career, I've and passionate about both FileMaker and more specifically FileMaker in higher education. Um, so today I'm going to cover um, a few topics. First I'm going to show some FileMaker solutions that are in use right now in higher education and just give a broad overview of how FileMaker is used in our higher ed customers. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how to go about becoming, go, moving from that island of what being the single FileMaker champion at your institution to building broader institutional support for the platform. Um, then we'll talk a lot about building a FileMaker community, um, both you know the steps that you can take right now, and then also I'll bring Kevin back at the end um, to talk about where their vision is with the FMED um, virtual user group. Um, so with that, let me get started showing some solutions. Um, one of the most common uses we see for FileMaker in higher education is systems or solutions that extend the existing enterprise student information systems. Most universities have a system in place like PeopleSoft or another Banner or another SIS, and those systems are used you know, extensively for registration and grades, um, bill collection, and other things. But there's also a lot of things that those systems do not do that um, people in departments around universities need to augment those systems to get their jobs done. Um, so with that, I'm going to show a few examples from around the country um, for things like degree auditing, tracking lecture attendance, um, student advising, internship applications, and scholarship applications. Um, so first, um, the degree auditing electronic record keeping system. And this is from a, a state school in the Northeast and was built by someone who works in the registrar's office. Um, and the system is updated nightly with um, student record information of students who have applied for degrees. Um, this system imports data nightly from the university's data warehouse. And then new or modified records are flagged for the staff to review the next day. The system facilitates um, the keeping of progress notes, the overall degree auditing workflow, and then communication with the students to confirm that they are on track to receive their degree on the date they expect it. Um, it streamlined a manual paper process by pulling together that student data, the degree application from the data warehouse, 
with the, together with the degree requirements in a single screen or a single system so that the staff could go to one place, do all their work, and make sure that students graduate on time with all their requirements met. A second system from that registrar's office is a proactive student notification system. In this solution, they automatically send notifications to students when they're in danger for some reason. Things like their academic standing changes because of a grade change and that could lead to a problem at the end of a term. Um, a warning that incomplete grades may lapse into a failed grade in the future if they don't take the steps they need to to complete their incompletes. Finally, credit restriction problems that could arise if they don't change a registration status during the add drop period. Um, and again, this improved communication from the registrar's office with students automated a previously manual process and reduced a lot of end of term problems and surprises to students. Um, this next two solutions I'm going to share come from Kevin at Drexel. Um, the first is a lecture attendance tracking system. This is a client server system where the clients are iPads running FileMaker Go and they have a central FileMaker server. Um, in a data center. And this system is used to take attendance in classrooms. It was originally designed for large lecture hall classes and it allows a staff member or TA to stand at the entrance to the room and quickly take attendance as a student walks in by scanning an RFID card in the student's college ID. And with this solution they're able to process 350 students entering a lecture hall in under seven minutes. And that's a key metric for this solution because that's the amount of time that students have to get from room to room between class periods on campus. Um, this next solution has a name called DAGDA, or the Drexel Academic Guidance and Documentation Application. And this started as a system to track interaction between academic advisors and the students that they meet with, and over time grew into a light, lightweight CRM tool that tracks not only advisor interactions, but also serves as a dashboard for basic student demographic data, um, FERPA authorizations, pre-college test scores, academic transcript, and an email interaction log. You know, and this solution is a great example of um, a department adopting and building adopting FileMaker and then building a solution that really automated their and uh, automated and streamlined their departmental work that then grew across the campus and is now used in several different schools and not just the engineering school where it started. This solution assists staff with tracking undergraduate intern applications about five to eight hundred per year and grant applications about a hundred a year half of which come in by paper and half come in online for both undergraduate and graduate student programs. You know overall the FileMaker solution assists with receiving in that application from the online system and that online system is built using MySQL, MySQL and PHP and then the FileMaker solution connects to it using external SQL sources. And that's why in the screenshot you can see that there's server, server data on one side and the application detail data that says local only in FileMaker on the right side. The applicant status is tracked through this solution throughout the process of applying and reviewing applications. Um, it generates emails that are sent to participants and applicants and it reports back and gives the department ability to analyze to determine what programs are successful and track year over year growth in all of their programs. Um, my last example I'm really I like because it's using FileMaker WebDirect new in FileMaker 13 and it's a scholarship application solution where students complete the scholarship application on the web via a WebDirect solution. And then the awards committee uses FileMaker Pro on their desktops 
to review the applications and award the scholarships. Um, this database creates acceptance letters, merges the information together from the student and scholarship tables, and then alerts students via email, and this allows the staff to be able to print out and mail the official acceptance letters. Um, so I just want to thank everybody who sent me screenshots and stories um, to share. And as I just showed, you know, these areas that colleges and universities use FileMaker to extend or build solutions on their student information systems are very important. In most of these examples, the FileMaker solutions replaced paper processes, and in all the cases, the systems improved departmental efficiency and allow staff to focus much more deliberately and closely on their student-facing responsibilities. Um, across the board, you know, almost every single university in the United States uses FileMaker somewhere. And in many cases, they don't use it for anything that requires student solutions, or they use it for those student-facing solutions. Um, and then also areas or applications that match up to what we see our business customers doing as well. You know, use in the communications and marketing department, various contact management or CRM type solutions, tactical data collection, events management are some of those examples. You know, another kind of business slash university example is in publishing. I worked at a university press where we used FileMaker for title management, and I also, in my career at FileMaker, have met with many other university presses and alumni magazines around the country and talked to them about how they can use FileMaker to help streamline their publication and management processes. Um, so some of the other areas, you know, as you can see from this list, um, the FileMaker uses are more specific to universities. Things like visiting scholar application tr or tracking the contacts of people who have been visiting those at the university. And there are hundreds of universities that use FileMaker in their research missions. Um, uses from replacing paper lab notebooks to managing the lab equipment inventory and procurement processes or even managing experiment locations. You know, we have several research labs that print little tiny barcodes on experiments at, that then get refrigerated or stored in various places. And they can use FileMaker and the barcodes to keep track of where each, each thing is in their lab. You know, finally, many universities are adopting FileMaker Go. Um, two of the stories you can explore on our website um, come from the Boston area. First, the Berkeley College of Music and also Boston University. Um, Berkeley uses FileMaker Go on the iPad to streamline their interview and audition process. Their recruiters and admissions counselors travel the world and meet with 7,200 applicants every year and listen to auditions and interview them and keep track of all of that workflow with FileMaker Go on their iPads. And that replaced a system that they'd been using FileMaker Pro on, notebook, on laptop computers for several years before that. Um, Boston University uses a FileMaker solution running on iPads to manage the document collection and management for their incoming international students every fall. And again, the FileMaker solution with FileMaker Go and the ability to take photos of the documents, um, streamline that process from something that was a big nightmare for both the staff and the incoming students to a process that, you know, end to end takes the student just a few minutes. And then another um, FileMaker Go use that we're starting to see is um, housing. And I met a young man at DevCon this year who works in the housing office at a university. And in addition to you know, using FileMaker for building maintenance types of things, he's hooked up a lot of other in-building sensors like thermostats and water flow meters and all kinds of things. And he's starting to integrate that building sensor data um, into FileMaker Go and FileMaker Pro and really starting to play around with 
um, the modern Internet of Things kinds of sensors. And I was hoping I could get some screenshots from his solution, but we ran out of time this week. You know, so with that, you know, I hope you can see that there are many different options and places where FileMaker is used across many universities. And having worked at a university that doesn't really support FileMaker across the board, I know how challenging it can be, you know, to just buy and manage departmental licenses, let alone get help from university IT to resolve your more sticky challenges. Um, so if you feel like you're on an island as a FileMaker champion, um, please recognize and know that you're not alone. Um, and there are probably other FileMaker users, or as we're starting to call them, citizen developers, at your institution who feel very much the same way. In fact, at the FM Head event at DevCon, um, I heard a story of two people who work at the same university and even know each other but didn't realize that they were both FileMaker developers on campus. And they informed that instant connection at DevCon this past summer. Um, so what can you do to start building that institutional support? Um, the first thing you can do, and I think Kevin did a great job of this at Drexel, is start a campaign to document your success. You know, share with your supervisors or your department chair how much time or money your FileMaker solution saves every month or every year or every application cycle, depending on, on specifically what you're doing. Um, start to list out what are the things that you and your team can do that you couldn't have done before you started using FileMaker. And really start to think about and propose what other things could you do. You know, anytime that you're showing um, support and skill and that you're doing vast important things with very few resources, you'll get the attention of management, IT, and others at your institution. And at that point, you may want to talk to your local FileMaker sales team. That would be me or Ronnie from our solutions consulting organization, and then also your regional business account manager, um, to make a presentation at the university about building broader support. Um, and frequently, if you get in touch with us, we'll know other users and departments on campus that are using FileMaker, and we can facilitate introductions between you and those other FileMaker champions. You know, and if the interest is there, you know, we'd also be happy to come and talk with you about a broader concept to build more capacity at the university um, that we're calling the FileMaker Center of Excellence. You know, so first of all, a center of excellence is, is a broad concept um, that refers to a team or an entity in an organization that provides leadership, evangelism, best practices, research, support, and or training for some focus area. I mean, in this case, the focus area is FileMaker, um, but the center of excellence concept is something that's really well understood in both academia and in business. And you know, we're starting to really advocate for a FileMaker center of excellence where it's appropriate. You know, so how do you know if the center of excellence might be a good opportunity for your university or campus. Um, so start to think about you know, some of these things. We're seeing you know, importance where there's a large number of using, users who use a single FileMaker solution, or if there's a big scale of dozens or hundreds of scattered FileMaker applications throughout an organization. You know, are those applications being developed at the workgroup level by citizen developers, or are they being supported by um, a collection of FileMaker Business Alliance members? Um, if you need any sort of IT or IS engagement, if you're integrating with existing systems, if compliance or information security are important, you know, those are all places where um, coming together and building the center of excellence concept can be very beneficial because it helps you talk to IT and get away from that, you know, crossed arm. IT wants absolutely nothing to do with FileMaker 
to helping IT understand that FileMaker can be a good citizen in the environment and take some of the load off of them. You know, so there are some consistent roles that we see in any FileMaker Center of Excellence. Um, so this isn't really a cookie cutter approach, but this is what we're seeing consistently across our successful customers. Um, a couple of areas that really pop out. One is the, the data analyst role. Um, most organizations now have somebody who really understands their data. And this can be at the university, overarching university umbrella level, or it would be at the departmental level where you're solving um, specific problems. You know, it also is really important to have some sort of management or executive buy-in, and that's that line of business or departmental sponsor. Um, another key role is the project management or project management organization, and then also the development team who's doing that work. And then finally, you need some sort of liaison going back and forth with the overarching IT department. You know, so in a lot of cases, you know, the roles are important, but they may be filled by fewer than four people. You know, in a lot of cases, you know, that, you know, development team and data analyst might be the same person for a departmental solution, but you'll still want to have that business sponsor and someone who's talking to IT if you need to do integration or make sure you're complying with um, various requirements like FERPA or HIPAA in a medical school type of uh, environment. You know, so, you know, think of this really as a, as a circle and there's all of these roles are important and all of the, the tasks that the roles handle are important. You know, so what does a center of excellence really look like? You know, this is a, a generic functional model that describes how you might structure that organization or working group. You know, at the top, you know, there's some sort of IT governance. This is the people who set the policies and say, you can use this kind of data in this way, or that, you know, the system of record here is our student information system. So if you're using data from that system, it always needs to get reported back into the student information system. It can't be resident in any other system like FileMaker. And then over on the left, you see, you know, you've got the business sponsor, the infrastructure, integration, IT team, the project management, and those all roll up into the FileMaker Center of Excellence that sits over the departments or work groups who are using FileMaker, and then can advise them on licensing policies, recommended development policies and procedures what are the rules and requirements for integrating with the existing enterprise systems. And, you know, also perhaps providing training resources or recommending, um, recommending development partners if that's part of their charter. You know, so I just wanted to pull out one example of a, of a center of excellence that we've already recognized amongst our higher education customers. I mean, this is a university that has about 14,000 students, faculty, and staff, and their model is that the Center of Excellence really provides deployment and support for the FileMaker platform. They do very little along the way of development services, but they do a lot in terms of supporting the FileMaker users and FileMaker community on campus. They provide and provision the software installers. They manage all the contracts and licensing with FileMaker. They define what versions are supported on campus and you know, advise their, their staff across the university when it's you know, safe to move up to the newest versions of FileMaker and also what versions are no longer supported or no longer going to be supported. And this helps keep everybody on campus within a, a tighter range of FileMaker versions. Um, they provide on-campus training and training resources. They do some hosting of applications. And when they were setting up their hosting environment, they actually we worked with them extensively to train um, the 
data center administrators on best practices for hosting FileMaker Server. And that's something we're happy to do for any of our larger customers. Um, they set the security policies and guidelines for interacting with university data. I mean, they also have guidelines for when does it make sense to use FileMaker and when does it make sense to use some other technology suite. And in fact, they have some specific rules around that that they have put in place. You know, finally, since they don't do a lot of development services themselves, they have relationships on campus with several um, area FileMaker developers, and they will refer departments who need development services to those um, FBA partners. You know, and finally, they manage the entire FileMaker platform approval process on campus. Um, but what this has, has enabled them to do is to have a very vibrant FileMaker community on campus and, you know, great success in using the FileMaker platform. And this support also leads to, you know, has pretty much led to tremendous growth on campus of the platform. You know, and finally, it means that FileMaker and the FileMaker community developers and users never really feel like they're under threat. They never have to keep their head down, and that's, that's part of what we're advocating really with the Center of Excellence, is it's a, a mechanism to help really build um, institutional support and knowledge for the FileMaker platform across an entire um, university or business. Um, so finally, if you can't get that far, if that's a big stretch um, right now, and you still don't want to be that island of, of FileMaker advocacy on campus, um, I recommend that you start to really look to build a community where you are. Um, so you can do that, as I said before, find the other FileMaker citizen developers on campus or in your area and start to share ideas with them. You know, one place that is a good place to start might be the Campus Macintosh user group if you don't know any other FileMaker developers in your area. And encourage your colleagues that you meet with to do that same kind of documentation of successes as well to help, you know, slowly, department by department, build the groundswell of support for the FileMaker platform. And then if you can, you know, find a meeting room on campus or sponsor a meeting in your department periodically. And a lot of university user groups only meet once a quarter or once a semester, um, but get together periodically to share your successes and solve problems together as a group. Um, when I was working at Harvard, I was the, one of the founding chairs of Harvard's FileMaker user group, and we grew out of a working group um, in the, the ABCD at Harvard, which is a loose association of technology professionals from around the university. It's completely separate from IT. Um, you know, in some cases it's sponsored by some of the IT departments, but you know, overall it was just interested technologists from around the community at Harvard who got together once a month to meet and share lunch and share stories. Um, and then that organization had several working groups. There was one for Macintosh, there was one for Windows, there was one back in the day when I was at first started for Novell, and one for Oracle. And out of the Macintosh user group, we ended up talking about FileMaker, it seemed quite a lot. And so we decided to start a FileMaker group as, as a subset of this broader organization. Um, and I'm happy to hear that it's still going strong. And in fact, I still get meeting announcements and found out that they're meeting sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, and if there's not enough um, interest on your local campus, on your immediate campus, if there's many universities in the area, you might be able to share meetings with them and rotate. Um, and the other thing is check for uh, local or regional FileMaker user groups. Um, those can be another resource to find community, a more broad FileMaker community in your area. Um, so with that, that was all the um, landscape survey I had prepared. So I'm going to turn it over to Ronnie um, for questions and answers. Very good. Thank you so much, Rosemary. That was uh, really amazing. Um, yes, we've got several questions over here uh, for you. So um, let's get right to it. 
Um, this one's actually, there's uh, two questions that are very related to each other, so I'll ask both of them together. Um, first is, can FileMaker integrate with other systems like Banner? And then a follow-up question is, um, do you have any recommendation on how to approach IT on requesting access to larger systems uh, installed like PeopleSoft and Banner? Um, so the first is FileMaker will integrate with pretty much any um, ODBC-based um, database system. And you can do a live connection to anything that's running on Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, or MySQL. Um, and as far as approaching IT to, to share data, um, there's a few things you can do. Um, one is if you're doing any sort of reporting now where you're making a query using Excel, um, this is really no different. Doing this with FileMaker is really no different than making that um, connection via Excel. So, you know, you may be even able to, if you've already got the login to that system, to do data extracts. Um, in other ways, it might be possible to just take the ODBC configuration you're using to get data into Excel and bring that into FileMaker and start using it. Um, you know, another option is to go to IT and say, you know, I'd really like to do this integration. This is what we're trying to accomplish. This is what I cannot do in the system that, that you've provided. I want to build on top of it. Um, would it be possible for me to point to the data warehouse or point to a read-only view to access that data and integrate it into my FileMaker solution or FileMaker application. Um, and once you have that, you know, you can also reassure the IT department that, you know, anybody coming in through this mechanism is only going to have the level of access their credentials into that system give them. Like FileMaker is not going to trump or give elevated privileges to anybody who should have read-only access in that system or anybody whose credentials in that system only allow them to see certain data. Um, you know, so really it's about um, really identifying what data it is that you need or want to have access to and then you know, asking for permission at kind of, if you start with that lowest level of, I just want to read only view, you know, this, you know, I don't see how this is any different from pulling a report and dumping it into Excel. In fact, you know, it's safer than pulling a report and dumping it into Excel because the data is never transferred down to my desktop. I'm viewing it, you know, live through through ODBC rather than making a copy and bringing it down locally. And using Excellent. that strategy will frequently help you make get over that first hurdle. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, the next question is, um, in the examples shown today, were there any concerned, concerns with the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA? Um, I'm, I'm guessing that that means in the development of those solutions. Um, you will notice that in all of those solutions, um, the data that I showed had either, um, I think, you know, demo mixed student as the student or um, student information was grayed out. So, you know, the, the people who kindly shared with me were very aware of, of FERPA. Um, and secondly, I think in all of these systems, there was recognition that you're dealing with um, FERPA protected data, so you need to build your system to be compliant with that by using um, FileMaker's rich um, access privileges and then also restricting who can view what records based on that need to know um, basis. I guess, Kevin, do you want to add anything since you built two of these systems? Sure. Um, I'm to kind of echo what Rosemary said in the demo stuff there, one of them was demo mix student who was I created as just a bunch of random data. Um, the address was my address growing up uh, uh, when I was in high school, so I felt fine sharing that. Um, and then the attendance one was just my information. Um, that is my actual Drexel University ID number that's on there. If anyone really, really wants to know it, but you can't really do anything with that. Um, in terms of uh, development, uh, we did go through 
the FERPA authorization both for the users um, as well as building that into the system for the users to be able to see who else was authorized. Uh, so we were uh, did have you know, FERPA authorization. We make sure that anyone who gets access to that system is an academic advisor who has already gone through the required clearances by the university to get, see all of that data. So uh, like Rosemary said before, they're not seeing any information they don't already have access to. I'm just collating it all into one spot. Um, and then we also built in the FERPA authorization portion of the screen so that the advisors, when they're there, they get contacted by someone can see who is authorized uh, via FERPA to give that, that student informa information out to, whether it's you know parents or older brothers, guardians, et cetera. Uh, so hopefully that answers that question. Perfect. Um, let's see, next uh, question we have over here. Um, is it possible to restrict FileMaker Go access to devices while they're while they're in a campus building? Um, so with FileMaker Go, um, much of the the restriction um, based on location may be possible. That's a good question. I haven't actually thought about it before, um, but I suspect using the location services um, functions in FileMaker. Um, you could probably restrict access, you know, based on the, the location functions if you can, you know, give that, get the, use get location and then figure out an appropriate range to that building. Um, you know, the other thing to think about with that is looking at um, the mobile device management systems because a lot of um, MDMs have um, geolocation disabling um, built into them. So, you know, depending on the use case, if it's a, I want this iPad to turn into a brick if it walks out of this building, um, for that you'd want to use the MDM, but then if you want to say, you can only access this FileMaker solution hosted on the server when the device is physically in this building, um, you might be able to, to do something there with location services. Um, the, the one risk there is that um, in order to um, do that test and run the script, you would first have to connect to FileMaker server and authenticate. So it's not a full, um, full blown. I wouldn't recommend using it as a full blown security uh, mechanism because you're still going to be authenticating. Um, but you should be able to, as part of that launch script in FileMaker, check the location, compare it to where you want the solution to be used, and if you're too far away, um, disable access or immediately log the user out. Ronnie, do you have any other thoughts on how you might handle that? Um, yeah, there are several built-in uh, tools, like Rosemary said. You can ask for um, IP, you can ask for uh, the uh, network interface card uh, address as well, and, and kind of um, figure out whether or not they're still in the building using the, the local network. Um, and apply security that way. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, just to weigh in on this as well, um, one, depending on how the network is set up at your university, um, you may be able to just kind of forget the mobile aspect of it and just do uh, IP restrictions based on the, your wireless networks uh, or even your wired network so that even if they were, they have to be VPN in uh, at the very least. So if they were, they'd have to either be on campus or VPN in to be able to get access to stuff. Thanks, Kevin. All right, next question. Um, this question about external authentication. Um, what do I what do I need to ask for from the uh, uh, from the Active Directory administrator in order to use external authentication um, uh, to use the AD Directory server? All right. So for external authentication, you have two things you need to do. Um, first of all, your FileMaker server needs to be a member of the domain. Um, and usually that's pretty pretty easy and is frequently a requirement for any device on the, on the network. Um, and the second is you'll need to have um, a security group in Active Directory that you can match up to for your um, FileMaker solutions. So you'll need one security group for each um, privilege set or level of access you have in your solution. I mean, it may be that you have, you know, just the full access account that you're using locally in the database for development, 
and then you have a departmental uh, security group that is the general use um, use in that FileMaker database. Um, so what you need to know is what's the exact name of the security group and if you've already got a departmental security group and everybody's going to have the same level of access, you probably don't need to have a second, you know, have additional groups created. Um, but you, if you do need to create additional groups, you'll just need to identify and tell them, you know, these are the groups I need and then these are the, the users who should be members of each of those groups. Um, I just want to add that overall, um, in most universities and most um, most businesses as well, that's a question that IT loves to hear because it means that you're using their existing um, account and authorization identity services, um, and thus you know reducing the risk of you know people having too many accounts and passwords to remember. And also reduce, reducing the risk of, you know, if someone leaves the university and their AD account is disabled, their FileMaker solution access is also going to be disabled at the same time, rather than someone else having to remember to go in and remove that account or disable that account specifically in FileMaker. Um, and the other thing on external authentication is if you go to, if you're a TechNet member on the TechNet site, there are two um, documents. One is the general FileMaker security guide, and the other is the external authentication guide that will give you a lot more detail on exactly what you need to do and also exactly what's happening under the hood in FileMaker to help the um, AD administrators feel comfortable with allowing that access from FileMaker. Excellent. Um, the next question here. Now, if I think a center of excellence is a possibility at our university, what should, be, what should our next steps be? Next step. um, so for that, um, next steps, I would say get in touch with the business account manager for FileMaker um, for your region. And if you're not sure who that is, um, you can either shoot me an email or shoot Ronnie an email, um, or just call into the the 800 number and talk to your um, in in-house uh, the FileMaker internal telesales um, sales representative. Um, but if you get in touch with any of us any of that way, um, what we can do is we can set up a a meeting where we'll do the full center of excellence um, presentation and really just start start having the conversation and um, try to point you toward the resources and um, down the path. You know, frequently what we're finding is the, the customers that are coming to us right away with, you know, we think this might be a good match for us. Um, a lot of you are already 60, 70, 80 percent of the way there and you just need to do a little bit more, you know, some, some, some work around the edges to really formalize and document um, the center of excellence. All right, I think, um, let's see, we've got several people have asked this same question in one shape or another show, and I think it's a great segue for Kevin. Um, and the question is, I'd love to speak with my counterparts at other universities who are using FileMaker. How can I contact them? Yeah, wow. That is a great segue. <laughs> that is phenomenal. That, that seems like a planted question. Um, but I will ignore that fact. So, um, the answer to that question then is hopefully uh, what we have actually started this group for. Um, so uh, before I get into that, I really quickly just want to thank Ronnie and Rosemary and Janine Campbell and Eric Frazier from FileMaker for helping us kind of put this together uh, and helping us pull it off. So quick background. Um, FM Head is something that came out of discussions between uh, Jody McLeese from the University of Pennsylvania and myself. Uh, we wanted to kind of create a space for us and others to talk FileMaker, but to do it in the context of higher education. Um, so we wanted to be able to reach out to other people in higher education and to talk using the language of higher education. Um, if you're on this uh, call, I'm pretty sure that you know that we're a little different in higher education. Uh, there's nothing quite like it. K-12 isn't quite the same thing because you know their students are generally required to be there. Uh, we want to track how, well, how many of our students stay in higher education. That's something that no one else has a, a problem doing. So 
we created FM Head as somewhere to kind of be a beacon, hopefully. Um, we're trying to get as many people just to kind of join the mailing list as we can right now so that we can try to start those conversations. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, I recommend that you go check out the website fmhed.com um, and just kind of poke around there. One of the sites that's on there is an institution site, um, and on that site is a list of the institution's names and email addresses for uh, right now the people who were at the initial conversation that we had at DevCon. Um, and I've had several more people sign up for the mailing list in the last uh, week or two, and that the institution page will be updated uh, shortly with all the rest of those names and email addresses. So if you are looking to get in touch with someone at another university who uses FileMaker, just hop on the site, uh, go to that institution's page, and there's a list of what is right now, I think, like 38 people on there, uh, and that'll quickly almost double. I've got another uh, 30 or 35 to put up on that uh, site. So. Um, I just, other than that, I just kind of wanted to do a, a, a brief overview of the plan, the future plans for uh, FM Head. When we created FM Head, we wanted to do something that as many people around the country, uh, at, le at least the country, if not the world, um, could be a part of. So that's why we took the, the webinar approach to this. Um, so this was our initial kickoff webinar, um, and hopefully you've seen some ideas of how FileMaker could be used uh, that you may not be thinking about. Um, and starting next month, we are going to do a second webinar, um, uh, something kind of similar like this, hopefully a little bit more interactive, um, just because we wanted to, we want to kind of change it up a little bit from month to month. And then starting in December, we will again be doing a webinar, but we're going to do something a little different as well, uh, and we will be hosting a gathering in probably in Philadelphia, or let me rephrase that, definitely in Philadelphia, uh, probably either at the University of Pennsylvania or at Drexel for anyone within you know, local driving distance. Uh, obviously, we can't expect people to you know, fly into Philadelphia just to attend this meeting. Although, uh, Reggie, I believe you're on this. If you want to fly in from Hawaii just to come to Philly to attend this, you're more than welcome to, but we are not going to expect you to come. Um, so we're going to kind of take that approach and do uh, three, you know, kind of a cycle of three webinars where the first two are just kind of online meetings for everyone to attend. And then the third one, uh, which will be, again, a, a webinar that everyone around the country can attend, but we'll also be hosting a, a meet and greet kind of thing to try to uh, create those personal relationships and to you know, maybe just let people spitball and talk about whatever they want, and it doesn't actually have to be about FileMaker. So I guess kind of in closing, um, if you are interested in being part of the group, please join the mailing list on the site uh, if you haven't already. We will be sending a survey out in the next couple of days uh, to members of the mailing list to kind of just ask for direction on where you want this to go. We don't have anything definite, you know, anything set in stone for how we want to do this. We just wanted to create something and then to kind of let it organically be led by the group. Um, also, uh, there's going to be a recording of today's webinar that will be available um, up on FileMaker's site as well as a link to it off of the FM Head site within a few days. Um, and thank you all very much for coming. And again, thank you, FileMaker, for helping us put this together, uh, for all of your help with this. And thank you, uh, Rosemary, for presenting. And that is all we have. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I think we have a couple of questions that weren't quite gotten to. Um, we're going to collect those, and I will put them up on a blog post um, on FM Head as well um, to give you answers to those questions. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.